Good afternoon, everyone. This is Gabe Cohen, GuideStar's Director of Communications. I'm pleased to welcome you to GuideStar's fourth and final impact call of 2015. Today, in addition to reporting our Q3 programmatic and financial results, we're excited to take our first public dive into the brand new beta version of our GuideStar nonprofit profile pages. And as always, we will spend almost half of our time today answering audience questions. We're thrilled to see that many of you on the call today have joined us for previous impact calls. Welcome back. And for you newcomers, welcome. To give you a bit of context, uh, GuideStar's impact calls are our attempt to evolve the definition of transparency and get you results in a more timely and responsive manner. Think of this like a public company's earnings call, only for nonprofits. With that, let me go over a few housekeeping items. First, as I mentioned earlier, we, we really want our impact calls to be interactive. So please ask questions and we will answer as many as we can. To ask a question along the way, you can use the Q&A panel on the right side of your WebEx screen, or you can join the conversation on Twitter with the hashtag GSImpactCall. Lastly, we will be sending everyone an email with today's recorded presentation in just a few days. So without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce Jacob Perold, our President and CEO, Evan Paul, our Vice President of Products, James Lum, our CFO, and Ms. Kusiri, our President, Vice President of Strategy. We are coming to you from all over the country today. Myself and James are here in the DC office, Evan is in our San Francisco office, and Jacob and Ms. are in New Orleans preparing for the Board Source Leadership Forum. With that, Jacob, the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Gabe, and thrilled to be here as always. We continue to be gratified at the amount of interest that we have in these calls. We've, had, we've got about 200 people on right now. We've had thousands who have joined these in the past. Um, and it is, as Gabe said, our experiment um, at uh, a new kind of transparency. And we're learning uh, every step of the way. Uh, and it's a great mechanism for us not just to share with you, but to make sure that we have our own internal systems aligned so that we can effectively know how we're making progress against, uh, against our goals. Um, and I'm going to be quite brief today because um, we've got some very, very exciting new content to share that, uh, that Evan will be handling soon on our new uh, nonprofit profile pages. Um, so let's go ahead and go on to the next slide, one more. Um, so um, I did want to announce that we, we just recently released a report on U.S. veterans organizations by the numbers, which I would direct uh, all of you to. We found in our database 45,559 organizations um, seeking to serve veterans. And in a post-9-11 world with vets coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan, facing new kinds of challenges as well as the same kind of challenges that veterans have faced throughout the centuries, we've seen the nonprofit sector really step up and respond. Um, and uh, there's, of course, as is always true in, in any uh, part of the nonprofit economy, a mixture of quality, um, but there is some truly excellent work there, and we wanted to do a basic description of, uh, of what's happening out there across multiple different axes, across strategy, across geography, across uh, size. So I'd, I'd recommend to all of you to take a look at this report. Um, next slide, please. Um, and, and I just want to take a moment to remind you all, um, for those of you who've seen this, and to share briefly with those of you who haven't, GuideStar's theory of change. Um, that and it's a constant reminder for us on the staff of why we do our work, um, that the sometimes abstract conversations about data and infrastructure are profoundly important for the people in the communities and the ecosystems that are served by nonprofits. And this theory of change lays out the basic logic for us of how the work that we do on the top row drives change in the nonprofit sector in the middle row, um, which then in, in turn drives the fundamental factors of success in the nonprofit sector, the quantity and quality of giving, and the efficiency and the effectiveness uh, of nonprofits, ultimately leading to, to impact. Um, and we always try to reference this and stay rooted in this um, to ensure that, that we are being as smart as possible um, in, in our work. And uh, the most important part of our work are the products and tools that we make um, that, that people use every day. And, and um, with that, I will hand it over to Evan Paul, our Vice President of Products, who's overseeing a profound transformation in GuideStar's product suite um, and, uh, and has a lot to share today about that. So with that, Evan. Hi, everyone, uh, and uh, I feel very honored to be here today. This is my first impact call I've gotten a chance to really speak on. So uh, as the head of products, I wanted to build from our theory of change and just talk, uh, speak a bit 
about how we think about uh, products at GuideStar. Um, so with our mission uh, and real focus on serving our two primary user groups, so nonprofits themselves and donors, both uh, average individual donors as well as institutionalized funders, foundations, we our products are basically organized along two dimensions. So there's what we call our web products, uh, so that's anything you can do on guidestar.org. And then on the bottom, you'll see there are platform products. So those are a variety of different white label uh, solutions that uh, some companies and organizations use, and then our APIs, which are data feeds, as well as data sets, um, et cetera. For us, when we're thinking about product development and design, the real goal for guidestar.org is around that performance and effectiveness piece that was mentioned on the last slide. We want to be leveraging the data that we have to enable nonprofits to really compare uh, against peers and benchmark themselves, see how well they're doing in the landscape of organizations doing great work. And on the donor side, uh, we really want to encourage that smarter giving by donors to really enable them to see well-run, well-performing organizations compare and contrast different organizations, their programmatic performance, their financial management, their operational excellence. On the platform side, the, the goal fundamentally is efficiency. Uh, so our data getting out through as many different channels as possible so that a nonprofit, if they up, update and maintain their profile on guidestar.org, they're assured that it's getting populated throughout the internet uh, on point of sale giving, uh, for example, Amazon.Smile, online donation platforms, employee giving and workplace giving platforms, community foundations, donor advised funds, grants management software. And that all happens through our platform products. Um, and, and so, so that's a bit of context, uh, kind of how we think about products at GuideStar. The, the one common unit between both of these tiers is the profile about a, a, an organization. That really frames what information we're collecting, um, how we might be processing it in a variety of ways, how we're displaying it, um, and there are lots of tough choices to be made in all of that. Um, uh, and, and it's really uh, challenging to get it right. And <clears throat> we're, we're never getting it perfect. We're always trying to get it better. So today I'm going to talk about kind of the, the biggest evolution recently in, in showing an, a profile of nonprofits, uh, first kind of our, from our current profile pages, um, and then uh, what, what we've just launched recently. So let me switch out of this view, um, and I'll go to my desktop and show you one of our current profile pages. So, um, so this, is, uh, this is a pro view, so this is kind of everything we've got on one organization, Oxfam America. Uh, so if you were to look through this, um, if, and if any of you have premium or pro subscriptions, or even on the free view, uh, this layout will look uh, quite similar. Um, within Premium and Pro, you get this very compelling Pac-Man-looking pie chart there. Uh, you've, uh, you go through, and, and there's a lot of text, um, and, and there's kind of this summary view uh, initially, and then there's a variety of tabs that you can click on uh, to get more, more information and more historical uh, data. And the pattern we were in for several years was, was basically we get new data, and we put, this, put it into the same design. Um, but visually, not a whole lot was changing uh, significantly. Um, and, and a lot of the most important information, uh, mission and impact, uh, is, is buried. It, it's kind of further back here um, uh, behind uh, a lot of financial people and governance and other information. And so we started really thinking critically about this, um, about how can we do a way better job of enabling uh, a user to really see the story of an organization uh, on multiple key dimensions. So, um, let me switch back to the uh, slide view. So we started out with a lot of brainstorming internally and externally. This is just an artifact uh, of a big meeting uh, design studio session we did with Bridgespan, where they really went to task and we said, hey, no holds barred, critique our profile pages, tell us how they're horrible or great or, uh, or otherwise, and, and what, do you, what would you be your thoughts on ways to make them better? Um, got a lot of it, great ideas from that meeting, as well as many, many others with a variety of different uh, stakeholders, partners, and others uh, over uh, several weeks. We then went through a process of uh, distilling those down, and we really started to see that fundamentally people want to answer key questions. And so we need to do a really great job of figuring out what are those questions for us to know how to answer those questions well, and if we're even able to answer some questions. So these are some of the questions that came through that process. You know, where where does an organization provide their services? What's their service area? Um, how diverse is their funding? How has their funding changed over time? How financially stable are they? 
these are the kinds of questions people are want, coming to our site to try to answer. Um, often they're downloading 990s, they're pouring through uh, lots of text information, and it takes a lot of time. And uh, it's sometimes really arduous to try to answer some of these fundamental questions about how an organization is performing. Um, so we also needed to think about how different audiences for us are accessing our information at different tiers. So there's the free version of GuideStar. So 99.9% .9 of our users access our site for free. And so for who we're designing for, for that, at that tier, we're really designing for average individual donors. Um, they're coming to look up one organization, maybe a couple. Um, it, we want to, any organization that a nonprofit has entered in to update their profile on GuideStar, that all goes straight out to uh, get the maximum visibility. So includes all the self-reported information, and then it includes some recent 990s. So provides the basic set of information that uh, your average donor feels like they can make a well-informed decision. Now, at the premium view, um, we're really designing for nonprofit managers, people running an organization, really trying to get a more in-depth view of how their organization is performing relative to their peers, and see peer organizations that are being run really, really excellently or not. Um, and similarly for foundation staff, when they're considering making a significant grant investment in an organization, they're really wanting more in-depth information to really understand the trajectory of that organization over time, how that organization's changed under different leadership, uh, et cetera, what they might have tried from kind of from a revenue perspective in the past and, and how that looks like it played out or not. Um, and so really for that, we really wanted to think about visualizing the historical financial and operational data some key metrics that those folks are really often asking, how can we pre-calculate and do that work for them so to save them time, uh, uh, months of cash on hand, uh, for example. Um, and then at the pro tier, those are really the consultants that are often supporting nonprofits and found, uh, foundations. So they're often taking our data and running and going to a statistical package. Uh, so how do we get them access to much more in-depth data that they can take uh, number crunch, uh, do all kinds of additional analyses, as well as information on contractors, which, which is most relevant to that community. So we started sketching out ideas uh, about how this might work. Here's just one of dozens of, uh, of sketching out, you know, how could we show this? Should it be some column, uh, you know, bar charts uh, with, with pop-out pie charts uh, next to them? Should it be some line graph? Uh, how might that work, uh, given all the complexity of this information, uh, to answer some of these questions? Um, and so let me let me show you what we came up with. Um, so I'll switch back to my desktop and WebEx. There we go. So um, so this is current state. Um, and let me show you what Oxfam America looks like in the new design. So this is the the beta view. Uh, just to switch back really quick, if you want to access this uh, on GuideStar.org, you just go down to the bottom and click on this button right here. Take me to the beta version of this page. Um, that then will show you this new. Version again. This is the pro view. So everything we've got on this organization, um, we've instead of I think uh, nine different tabs, we've organized this into four primary sections. So summary, programs and results, financials and operations, uh, moving programs and results where we think it should be, which is the first big section section to really think about and consider. Um, for Oxfam, they've done a great job of updating their profile. Uh, so there's a lot of great rich information in here, um, and I just wanted to highlight one one piece. So. We have a set of charting impact questions. In the previous design, these had actually been in an ancillary PDF that you had to download, and it actually wasn't on the page uh, significantly. So, and we think this is fantastic information. What are they working to accomplish? What are their key strategies for making that happen? What are their capabilities for doing so? And how will they know if they're making progress? Um, and what have or haven't they accomplished so far? So, Oxfam's taking a crack at addressing some of these questions, a nice little summary view. Um, and we think it's fantastic to be able to put this right up front and center this is what people should be thinking about when they're donating to a chari uh, charity, that the thinking going into their work, the results that they're achieving, not simplistic ratios like overhead ratios. You know we've got a problem with that. <laughs> if you haven't heard we've got a problem with that, go check out overheadmess.com. It explains why we think that's a bad idea. Um, so, and, and this is just the beginning. We're gonna be getting more programmatic data into this area over time uh, through our platinum initiative, through finding other public data sources, through partnering with different technology companies. Uh, we really wanna flesh this section out so that we get really great results information. So the, the second uh, example I want to show is, is the financial section. So, and, and how can we show financials that really tell a story? So this is for the American Nas National Red Cross. It, it's a really great and, and simple example. So we scroll down to the financial section and we look at their finances over time and we notice, quite obvious, wow, the Red Cross, they had these two giant spikes. I wonder what that was about. 
Well, if you look at one, uh, it was from 2001 to 2002. That was 9-11. Uh, Red Cross was one of the big organizations that donors went to. They really wanted to think about how do we address uh, this issue? And a lot of people are really in a really hard place uh, because of the terrorist attacks. Uh, how can we help? And the Red Cross was one of the organizations that donors went to. Um, and you can see that their, their contributions spiked up um, and their program services had kind of a hard time keeping up with that new revenue. Um, a few years later, this next big spike, um, we see that was after Hurricane Katrina. Huge contributions coming into the Red Cross uh, due to Katrina, and they really ramped up their program in a huge way to get that money out the door uh, to the, the communities and families uh, and other folks that, that have been affected by Katrina. So really interesting story that you can see in this data. And with other organizations, you can see an evolution in their business model. You know, some years they really relied on grant, uh, government funding, and then they phased that out. Or you see how that's declined in, in, in recent years. Uh, other organizations, uh, you know, went from a largely contribution-based model to generating more direct revenue through services. So really starts to tell you a story. Um, and just to show this behavior, um, you can click on this particular, uh, you can slide the slider bar, and this will show you any given year. Or you can just hover, and, and on the right, you can see how the chart right over there um, changes dynamically. So uh, we think this is a pretty good job, and this is a pretty good first step. Um, there's a lot more to be done. Um, here, we're pre-calculating some key metrics, liquidity, months of cash, uh, fringe rate, et cetera. And you can see how these numbers have changed over time. Again, there's a lot more uh, that we're going to be doing in this area to leverage the historical financial data that we've got um, to really show really insights uh, into the data that, that really haven't been visible pre previous to that. And then the, the third big section that we've organized content into is the operations section. And for this, I wanted to highlight the Silicon Valley Community Foundation. So um, if you click on that, uh, I'm, I'm not going to go deep into the leadership. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I want to scroll down, and uh, they, there's a really interesting story to tell around their staff. So one, you can see how their staff has gone from zero to 188 uh, in, what is that, seven years? Um, uh, actually, let's see, yeah, seven years. Um, so that's interesting. You can see this growth trajectory. Uh, for some other organizations, you see it skyrocket, you see it oscillate. Uh, it gives you a sense of their capacity. And then for Silicon Valley, um, with their demographic reporting, um, you notice, wow, they've got a really diverse staff. Uh, this is really amazing. Um, so a year ago, we launched the ability for organizations to report out their organizational demographics. To date, over 4,000 organizations have done so. It's completely voluntary. Um, they can report out on gender identity, uh, race and ethnicity, sexual orientation and disability. Um, and it begins to have a more, it enables a more data-driven conversation about these issues uh, in the nonprofit sector. And so what we see with Silicon Valley uh, Foundation is 30% of their board is, Af uh, is uh, Asian, Asian American, 20% black or African American, 10% Hispanic, Latino, or Latina, 40% white. And if you know Silicon Valley, um, that's quite noteworthy because uh, there's a huge Asian American population in the Valley. Uh, so the fact that Silicon Valley Community Foundation is really taking that seriously and is trying to make their organization diverse and representative of the community that they're served is really noteworthy. And we thought uh, really commendable and I, I just wanted to highlight it. So, and this display from, to nerd out on the data side, uh, or the product side, it just does a way better job of showing that story than if this was just a table of numbers. Um, and so that's, Another example of, of some of the uh, efforts we're making here. Again, more work to be done on operations uh, to, to generate more insights uh, from the historical data we've got, um, but this has been the, the, the next big shift. So let me switch back to the slides. Um, and right now we're, we're in a beta phase. Uh, there, there are still some little weird behaviors happening. Uh, it took a ton of work to redesign our architecture to enable some of these data visualizations, uh, pushed us around some data quality issues uh, with some of the historical data. And we're pretty sure, vast majority of time, it's, it's good. Um, but the reason we're calling beta is so that we don't get to a, a ton of flack if something looks weird, because we want to have this period where we can get your feedback. Uh, the organizations that you know, that you've worked with, um, please go to their profile pages, check out their beta page, and, and then at the bottom, there's a little link to give us some feedback and let us know, this looks weird, this isn't displaying correctly, um, and uh, uh, it may be that the fundamental 990 data uh, is weird, it may be that it's, it's self-reported information, there was a typo or an error on that side, um, or it may be that we, didn't, we screwed up and we, we didn't get it right in, in uh, displaying that. 
And so we really want to get your feedback because we want to do as good a job as we can at presenting organizations accurately um, uh, as much as we're able to. And then the second is if um, I, I did a very superficial run through uh, on today's call. If you'd really like an in-depth demonstration that goes really feature by feature and explains how all this stuff works um, and what you can see when, um, there's an in-depth demo coming up on November 18th at 2 p.m. Um, our head of design and product marketing managers are both going to be on there. Uh, this is the link to it. Really encourage you and, and your staff to attend. Uh, if you've got questions about, you know, if I enter information on, on GuideStar, how will it show up? Uh, we can address some of those there. Um, but that's where we'll really do the really super, super deep dive. Um, and with that, uh, let me, are we going to take questions now or should we hold off on questions later? Gabe? Yeah, I think let's uh, wait for questions until the end, but if anybody has them, they can ask them uh, through the Q&A bar that's on the right-hand side of the, the WebEx screen. But for now, I think we can just continue on with the rest of the presentation. Great. So now I'll turn it over to Ms. to talk about programmatic results. Thanks, Evan. That was really exciting. Um, and I don't mean to damper the excitement, but you know, Evan talked about our profile page release, which happened on October 26th. I will be talking about programmatic results, which ended for the quarter on September 30th. If you can go to the next slide, Evan. Um, so a lot of the results coming out of the great work that Evan and team have been working on aren't yet reflected in this information. So you'll see here our data collection efforts um, are char characterized by the level of information that nonprofits provide to us. And you'll see that overall, as at um, the end of the third quarter, we've had about 14% growth overall. And the growth has slowed a little bit quarter on quarter, and you know, to be expected, um, we definitely see things ramping up as we focus on our email marketing campaign, as we focus on our stakeholder support services, um, to really help this program, you know, get to the potential and get to the numbers that we expect to see. So stay tuned for the next uh, impact call, and we'll be able, hopefully, to share those results with you. Um, next slide, please, Evan. On this page, um, you know, the, the previous page was data collection and then data distribution. So if you recall Evan's slide on our web uh, products, so that's unique users, that first one on people that come to GuideStar.org. Um, the next two are platform products, so where GuideStar information shows up on other platforms. And similarly, since these results are a bit dated, the, the excitement and the activity that we've seen as a result of the new profile pages and those that have been brave to click on that beta <laughs> version um, really haven't been reflected yet. So growth year on year, um, you know, is at, at a steady pace, but you'll see quarter on quarter has been a little bit slow um, to be expected. Um, I will just highlight that last metric on GuideStar for grant adoption. Um, we expect to see a lot of exciting, um, an exciting update in terms of how we've been working with um, grants management software vendors in terms of getting foundations to use and adopt the profiles, um, kind of pre-populate the, the application process um, in, a, in a more um, bulk way. So it's not just foundations signing up one by one, but as we work with grant management vendors like Flux and Foundant, um, we will we'll be able to get foundations coming on in the tens and hundreds, um, you know, in one in one swoop. So we're very excited about that. You'll see the, the growth for that has been strong, um, and we expect it to get even stronger. Next slide, please. So in terms of our data innovation, you'll recall the first impact call of this year, I talked about our comparison tools. And these are products that nonprofits use to compare themselves through our financial scan product, um, through our comp compensation report, looking at operational financial metrics, as well as um, organization uh, performance metrics um, and salary information. So, you know, the growth as well um, is actually not reflected here. So we've taken three different products. Our financial scan and uh, compensation report has been seen strong growth at double digits, high double digits. Uh, but our, the other tool that we included in here is Philanthropedia. Now, this has taken a little bit of a backseat as we uh, figure out our strategy with Philanthropedia, and that's uh, surveys uh, done by experts uh, to um, illuminate top performing nonprofits or top nonprofits. Um, so those numbers are a little bit masked, and we're going to be evaluating this experiment and how we calculate these comparison tool participants 
in the new year. So, um, you know, these both these metrics, the learning tool participants, this represents our um, informational sessions. We previously called them our product demos. Um, our webinars, our blogs, and that has just gone through the roof. So, you know, shout out to our Marcom team, um, Gabe and, and others that have really been um, focusing and ramping up on their efforts uh, for these various um, content pieces that are coming out, um, webinars that are just really taking things to the next level, both our own content as well as, you know, experts like Beth Cantor, Relationship, uh, Relationship Science, and others that have foundation center that have um, provided content for us. So if you think back to the theory of change, GuideStar, you know, acts uh, not alone. So we work in a, you know, big sector-wide effort. And so what we measure also on our data innovation efforts is the work of others. So we like to track this. Um, you know, we talked about uh, total charitable giving a couple impact calls ago. But what I'd like to focus on today is the percent of individuals um, who compare organizations. So some of you might have already seen the Money for Good research that came out. Uh, Camber Collective, um, I think, released it uh, two, a month ago or so. And um, it, we're really excited by this metric. So 50% uh, growth in the percent of individuals, you know, over time from 3% in 2010, 6% in 2011, and uh, now 9% in 2015 are not only researching, but also comparing organizations to find, you know, the most effective ones. So we're really excited by this research. I've included there the link to the full report under the footnote, and I just want to leave you with some highlights about, you know, what we're uh, excited about that the Money for Good research focused on. So one is impact metrics. The second is how our data can empower better decision making. And then the third is research on different donation channels. So a lot of exciting stuff, um, and I look forward to being able to report even more next on the next impact call. With that, I will hand it over to James for financials. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Welcome everybody to our impact call. Um, if you can share the next slide, please. Um, a couple of quick disclaimers. Our numbers that I'm going to present are preliminary and they're unaudited. And our safe harbor disclosure is as follows. Historical results are not necessarily indicative of future results. All forward-looking statements contain known and unknown risks that may result in future results that are materially different from historical. Next slide. Um, I think that uh, we've had a had a very interesting uh, set of uh, news to share with you. I think that you can see that, you know, what Evan uh, spoke about really points to how we are changing the way that we present data, the way that we change, the way GuideStar works, the way that GuideStar works with all of our users, and has we have really brought our site on par with the best sites around us that uh, give us data on both nonprofit and for-profit organizations and their performance. So that's great. And um, at the same time, we've seen, you know, Ms. give us, you know, some of our operating uh, perspective on the impact that we're having with the data that we share. And then, and then, you know, you look at the timing and how that's uh, related to our financials, you kind of see the whole cycle of investment and how they occur in the nonprofit, uh, nonprofit sector. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. I think a great case study for that in effect is we're, in, we're a case study in investing in the nonprofit sector. So we have to make investments first in order to create the web pages that Evan showed you. And although there, you know, as Ms. pointed out, it's going to take time for that to result in material programmatic results and financial gain or um, financial performance as a result of that, it's going to be last in that process. So that's what I'm going to highlight today in the numbers I'm showing you here. So first up is this slide, which kind of gives you kind of our, our three biggest numbers here. Our earned revenue over the last four years, our operating expenses over the last four years, and our grant activity over the last year. And you'll recall from some of our previous uh, earnings calls that in 2012 and 13, we're really in turnaround mode and trying to um, trim expenses, maintain revenue, and establish, um, you know, positive 
cash flow, operating income, and shore up our, our, our balance sheet because we're in deficit as far as op, uh, net assets were concerned. So um, we see that we accomplished the turnaround in 2013, and since then we've been investing heavily in, in people, staff, and processes. The things that get us to, that took us down the long path of achieving those uh, new profile pages that Evan showed you. Um, at the same time, you see that, you see on the right-hand side how expenses have uh, increased over the last couple of years. You'll see, though, that the financial earned revenue has not really increased. It basically stayed flat on the left-hand side, those columns, over the last four years, despite the investments that we need in people processing um, products. Now, in the center, you'll see the kind of grant support that we've had, though. And it really does that, you know, points to the importance of grant support from foundations and outsiders uh, in supporting needed investments in nonprofit infrastructure organizations such as ourselves. And it's the same can be safe said for making needed investments in the capacity of nonprofit organizations throughout the sector. It's difficult to fund growth, new product development, new services strictly based on earned revenue because you need the investment, you need to put the investment in first, you need to build what you're going to do, launch it, and then only over time are you going to see the returns from that. So it's difficult to invest on the front end with your own uh, resources. So thank you for all the support that we've gotten. On the grant side, where we pulled in over three and a half million dollars this year, um, and it's been uh, a huge um, bolster to our bottom line, which you'll see in the next slide. Here is our cash flow year to date through nine months over the last four years, uh, as well as our gap operating income, which has changed in unrestricted net assets. And you can see the huge turnaround we've had in 2015 compared to the results we had in 2014. And the main explanation for that is we were making those investments in 2014 without getting return on our investments yet because they had not been uh, completed yet. We continue to make the investments in 2015, but grant funding has come in to support that alongside our earned revenue. And that has um, been more than enough to cover the additional expenses that we've been putting into our investments. And it's resulted in positive cash flow rather than negative cash flow. It's essentially a $3 million turnaround in the past year uh, for cash flow. And, uh, for both cash flow and operating income. And that's how important the grant support that, that we've gotten. Um, we go to the next. And this has strengthened our, our balance sheet. So we we operate at a, with a budget of a little bit between 10 and $12 million, about $12 million in expenses now. So it's about a million dollars in expenses per month that we need to cover with our cash. So you can see that our cash levels have almost more than doubled since last year at this point, from $1.5 to $3.6 million, which gives us about three and a half months worth of operating expenses covered by our current cash reserves, which is a huge difference from just having just over a month's worth of cash at this point last year, um, which really gives us the financial flexibility to continue making investments as well as business as usual operation, which is so vital to uh, keeping GuideStar's doors open as well as improving GuideStar so you can see additional improvements like the new profile pages that we've seen. Um, can you the next slide? Here I show what our cash flow looks like with and without grants. The red line is our cash flow with grants and, our, and the red line is our cash flow without grants. And these are trailing 12-month averages. So you can see that um, at the end of 2013, that red line, our cash flow without grants, but during our turnaround phase, on a trailing 12-month basis, got to about break even, that zero line. We were able to almost support ourselves without grants because we're in turnaround mode. And with grants, we're building up cash and getting ourselves out of the hole so we can make future investments. Going into 2014, we started making our investments. Um, and therefore, cash flow without grants started trailing, as well as, and, and grant activity overall was staying about flat. So both of those lines are decreasing over time. Now, we've made enough investments and talked to enough people and convince the sector overall that what we're doing, the path that we're on, makes sense. And we've gotten a lot of grant support from um, notable foundations such as Gates, which was kind enough to give us um, a $3 million grant. 
which they were also kind enough to accelerate payments on and uh, deliver the full amount in just 11 months. So that it explains the huge spike in um, the green line in 2015. So now, including grants, we have, are able to see what you saw in the previous cycle. Significant positive cash flow and a very strong balance sheet. Meanwhile, our performance, because revenue is still flat, basically, as of right now, our cash flow, excluding grants, is still trailing that. Um, and and this in, herein lies the story, I think, of most nonprofits, not just for guys, but for most others, is that your cash is going to decrease as you make investments. And over time, you're going to have to find a way to pay for that. And that can be through grants, which we've been lucky enough to get, or it can be through earned revenue, which we um, look forward to achieving uh, once we see some positive lift from all the new products that we're putting out. Um, and that's a, that can be a difficult uh, door to try and spread in the meantime, right? Because you, you need to recover your cash flow to decent levels um, in order to keep this uh, train moving forward. So fortunately, we have the support of grants. Next year, what we, see, what we foresee is grants tapering off mildly, but it's staying um, fairly flat, while the uh, red line excluding grants to gradually lift, and the two of them hopefully to uh, close the gap between each other for time. Next slide. And here's a quick preview of our uh, outlook for the remainder of this year and next year. We think that um, this year, we're gonna, continue, we're gonna finish the year very close to where we are right now. We've had ample grant support that both gives us great financial flexibility for next year, allowing us to continue investments in new products and new ways of looking at our data and helping the sector. And in 2016, we are going to move from beta to full-blown launch of our new profile pages. We have a lot of other initiatives that um, we haven't really talked about yet, so I'm gonna hold off, but uh, they're gonna be of similar nature. And, uh, and that increased functionality is going to eventually lead to improved earned revenue. And I'll just, I just have two quick comments um, before I kind of close out the session and we move to uh, lessons learned. And one was um, the Chronicle of Philanthropy in their last issue published uh, a whole issue that was focused on trust of nonprofit organizations and how that appears to be a bit of a problem for the sector. And one of the articles they had in there was titled, Borrowed from Business. Nonprofits try their own version of Wall Street style earnings report. And it was an article that was about what you're listening to right now, Guy Starr's impact calls, as well as similar uh, efforts by groups like um, New York Charity FedCap and a San Francisco group called the SAMA group. Um, and, it, and it was just basically saying that these are different ways that nonprofits are trying Wall Street style earnings calls to address the trust issue. And I, I like to think that. Um, your participation here is not just as a participant, but as a uh, thought-provoking experiment to help you think about, and your organization think about, what does transparency mean for my organization? What does accountability mean? And what, what can we do, what do we want to do to address that issue, and that issue of trust overall for a nonprofit sector? It doesn't have to be what we're doing, but it could be something of your, of your own choosing. Um, I, I'd love to hear what you think about that. And the second is that, you know, uh, that article kind of says that well, the nonprofit sector is adopting things that the for-profit side of things does. And the converse, I would like to point out, is that for-profits are adopting a lot of things that nonprofits are doing too. Um, corporate social responsibility programs, impact investing, social enterprises, those are all, in, all, all attempts for them to steal our thunder, our impact, et cetera. And it's growing in nature. It's something that we should all be aware of and thinking about. And to the extent that we're approaching uh, for-profit for functionality on our website and the way that we present numbers and everything else, they're doing the same thing with how they present their impact. Uh, efforts such as this uh, SASB, the Sustainability Accounting Standards Board, and um, all the other impact uh, measurement metric initiatives, uh, I think are important things for us to keep our eyes on because the two worlds are blending and, and probably going to collide in the near future. I think we should be aware of that. Thank you. Great. Uh, so 
on these impact calls, we typically do a lessons learned section, and, and uh, I drew the short end of the stick. No, just kidding. Uh, I've <laughs> tried a lot of lessons learned um, in the, the, a lot of the product development work that we've been doing. This is Evan, by the way. Um, so the, the biggest lesson for the products team at GuideStar is this huge untapped reservoir we have in the historical data. So um, GuideStar celebrated our 20th anniversary last year. Um, since 1998, we've been digitizing 990s, and we're just starting to scratch the surface of really leveraging that historical data. You saw, um, presenting that visually, that's just a first step. Um, there's a lot more work to be done there uh, with great data science um, and statistical analysis to really reveal trends, patterns. Um, there was an article that our VP of Research, Chuck McLean, did last year with Nonprofit Quarterly called, uh, I believe it was the life and death of nonprofits, something like that, which which gave a shot of that, of, of kind of looking at, you know, when nonprofits go out of business and why. Um, and we've got, we think we've got great data to give some insights in, into that um, to enable nonprofit organizations, uh, the, the managers of those organizations, to have some, some great benchmarks, um, uh, key key indicators of, of if they're in a healthy position or if they really need to uh, go back to the drawing board and think more rigorously about um, how they're running the organization, um, and as well as for, for donors, so that when they're making significant grant decisions in particular, that they uh, can really assess the, the performance of organizations. And um, with the historical data, it enables us to generate a lot more insights uh, than, when, than we have been to date. Um, so that's been a big lesson learned, and um, I think now we'll switch over to Q&A, and, and I've seen a bunch of questions come in and a few that are on my, my plate. So, Gabe, you want to take it on, or should I uh, just jump into it and start? Yeah, absolutely. Let me, let me field a couple general ones first, and uh, thank you to everybody. Um, to start off with, we're getting uh, a fair amount of compliments on the profile pages, so thank you very much, everyone, for that. Uh, and a few different people asked us whether uh, they enter their information in the same way to update their profile. Uh, Evan, I don't know if that's something that you want to speak to a little bit about how nonprofits can update that information. Sure. So we, um, the last impact call, we announced that we redesigned our profile update tool so that the self-reporting mechanism that nonprofits can go through and add additional information to their profile or add more updated information. So if you haven't updated your profile in a while, uh, you should check it out, log, it, log in, and you'll see a whole new user experience there. Um, we did a lot of testing to try to make sure it was a lot more intuitive um, and a lot easier to kind of work through. Um, with the new profile pages, that tool doesn't change at all. Um, but what will change in the coming um, months is we're, we're going to be asking some, some questions differently um, and to try to get better quality information out onto profiles. Um, and we'll be asking whole new questions like the, the platinum tier, which are getting at quantifying uh, programmatic results. So, so that, that your ability to update your profile is going to be evolving over time. Uh, we're trying to keep that uh, any significant moves to basically once a year. Significant moves. So if you've updated your profile within the year, you know that you're you're pretty good. Um, and and between there, just kind of more UX tweaks to try to make it easier uh, to to update your profile. So um, so yeah, if you haven't updated your profile recently, I would, I would encourage you to log into the tool. Um, but that tool won't change significantly with the new profile uh, design. It's more of just uh, presenting the information you previously entered in it in a much more uh, intuitive way. Okay, and uh, just to answer, to reiterate how you can see those data profiles and then also how you can leave feedback, uh, if you're looking at any of the uh, almost 2 million organizations who have profiles on our site, uh, there should be a little bar, banner down at the bottom of the web page that says to, to click on the beta view. So just click on that. And then similar, similarly afterwards when you're on the beta pages, uh, there's the same banner then prompts you to provide us with feedback. So that's how you do those two things. Uh, for those of you who are asking. Um, the next question I have uh, is about the charting impact questions that were displayed uh, up at the top of the new profile pages. Someone was asking if those are available for free or if those are in one of our premium or pro uh, software versions. Yeah, so um, those are definitely in the free version. Um, we basically adopted a practice that any of the self-reported information that nonprofits have taken the time to directly enter um, that shows up on every tier. So at the free level, premium and pro. Um, and so, yeah, so those charting impact questions, if you fill those out, those will show up to every uh, everybody that visits GuideStar. And 
increasingly some of our API uh, customers that are pulling that data into their other applications, uh, it'll show up there as well. Great, and right on, along those lines, Evan, um, you had mentioned that you had had some conversations with different people in the organization and outside the organization about which, which information on our profile should be displayed most prominently. Can you talk a little bit more about how you came up with those, quest, uh, you came up with those answers? Sure. Um, so there's a there's a behavioral science term that the name's escaping me, but there's this bias that one gets into where if you've got some data in front of you, you you assume that that's the most important data that's out there. Um, and for GuideStar, um, you know, we're rich in financial data and we're light in programmatic data and we're kind of medium on operational uh, operational data. And so. Um, when in the old profile pages, the emphasis was really on the financials because there's so much there. Um, but when you step back and you think about what's most important for donors to consider and for uh, nonprofit managers to really be focusing their attention on, at the end of the day, it's about results. It's about, you know, you're trying to change the world. How are you doing so? Um, and so that was one of the big pivots uh, relative to the whole overhead myth conversation. If, if we want donors to stop using financial proxies for impact and to start thinking about impact impact and not just some you know, ratio that's supposed to supposedly tell you the impact of an organization, but then we've got to get better data on, on the results of an organization and their programs, how their programs are being run, uh, what they're trying, what's working, what's not. And so that was the one of the big moves is, is to make that much more prominent, um, to really have that as the start of a conversation about an organization is what are they working to achieve and how are they doing in achieving that. Um, and then somewhat secondarily and as backdrop to that being their financial information and operational information that really are kind of supporting cast in, in how they're working to, to change the world. So um, that was the big move. Um, and um, the other moves were consolidating. So uh, instead of distributing financial information on two or three different tabs, let's put it all into one area so it's much more cohesive and coherent, uh, similarly with operational data. Um, so it's a bit easier for you to kind of get your head around um, the different dimensions of uh, the performance of an organization. Um, yeah, so does that help answer the question? I think it does, yeah. Jacob, a question for you from one of our nonprofits. Uh, do you see the profiles as eventually the gold standard for all grant makers? Uh, can we as nonprofits just point our grantors to guidestar.org and they can access the information and this nonprofit said, that would make my life so much easier. Um, I, I, absolutely, that is absolutely the direction that we are we're heading in. It, it simply doesn't make sense for nonprofits to have a bilateral exchange of information with all these individual foundations when they could do it once with GuideStar and count the, count on us to distribute it to those to those foundations, both through GuideStar.org, our public facing tool, but then also, as Evan has mentioned, through all these other channels that allow us to get information. Uh, to foundations in particular, um, as Ms. mentioned earlier, through the GuideStar for Grant Applications program we have where that data shows up directly inside the grants management software that, that foundations use. I, I will say I think we can go beyond being a gold standard. I think we can be a platinum standard. And when we release um, the platinum tier next year, we will be offering an opportunity for nonprofits to tell their quantitative programmatic story the results in whatever terms make sense for them in terms of um, their progress towards their mission. Um, and when you start to put all that together, it's, it's, a, it's, a, true, um, it's a true common profile for the field. And um, we believe that that serves everyone's interests. Um, it helps nonprofits tell their story in a full and rich way that's far more up to date as well. Um, the, our reliance on the 990, as Evan mentioned, gives us great historical data but it's not always as current as we'd like, whereas a nonprofit can update their information on their GuideStar profile whenever, uh, whenever they'd like to. Um, and it begins to offer us um, a, a future where nonprofits are telling their own story in a rich, multidimensional way that is also efficient. Do it once and know that, that you're done with it. So, so we're really excited about watching that evolution happen. It's already starting. There are already a number of foundations that are doing exactly as this nonprofit leader uh, mentioned, they're just, they're sending, they're asking um, applicants to just update their guide store profile and they're going to look there. We expect to see a whole lot more of that over the next few years.
And we, we actually got a couple of questions asking us about 990 due dates, believe it or not. So, Jacob, will you touch on that and then talk a little bit about uh, kind of how 990 information uh, interacts with our profiles? Um, sure. So, so the 990 is due, um, it depends on an organization's fiscal year. The short answer is on May 15th, right around um, the same time that personal income tax returns are due. Um, most nonprofits end up filing an extension and end up providing it later, which is part of why much of the 990 data that we get on GuideStar um, is often much more out of date than we'd like, and why we offer this opportunity for nonprofits to provide us far more up-to-date information. Now, I say all of that, I should flag that I'm no accountant, and GuideStar doesn't provide that sort of guidance. Um, go to the IRS or go to your accountant for the details. Uh, but it is a similar cycle to what you see for personal income tax returns. Um, but our hope is that with some of the tools that we're, we're operating here that we're, um, and launching here, that we're able to really think of transparency as a continuous process and one where we take out the intermediary of the IRS um, and um, where we're able to supplement that baseline data from the 990 with more up-to-date, more compelling, more relevant uh, information. James, this next question is for you. Um, someone commented that they really like seeing all of our financial information, so we must have a fellow uh, CFO or a CPA on the line potentially. But um, <laughs> have you talked to any of our funders about this, about this kind of instant release of our financial information? Is that something that they're excited about? Yeah, we had a lot of support um, when we were putting, when I was putting together this idea, because I shopped it around first with. Uh, you know, the people who help our PRIs and our loans and our grants and some of our bankers and some, you know, CPAs and other CFOs in the industry that um, weren't directly related to us. So um, there's definitely uh, interest in the idea and they see it solving a lot of different, addressing a lot of different issues in the nonprofit sector as far as, you know, you know, are we telling our own stories, are we telling the important parts of our stories and are we telling it in a timely fashion, right? Um, but with that being said, um, there's also some reservations, and I think they're well placed, which is that, you know, well, you know, this file impact audit we're doing is not necessarily applicable to all organizations. We certainly don't presume that that would be the case. Um, and different types of organizations might have, you know, different resources to be able to put it together um, and may have uh, complications as far as getting all of their data organized. Um, in a nutshell, what my response has been, well, you know, at least, at least internally was, why not try it? We already report uh, internally on a monthly basis and we report to our board on a quarterly basis. Wouldn't it be simple enough to just repurpose that deck and have a webinar over it or release it in some other easy fashion? Um, we shouldn't keep our stakeholders waiting, waiting until a year later after our financial year ends and we filed our 990, because you know how slow I am with that. <laughs> uh, that's a very good point. Um, we've had a couple of questions, Evan, I think you're probably best positioned to answer this about how the new profile changes will affect uh, our, our foundation customers that are using Donor Edge. Can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. Uh, and so just for everyone's benefit, so Donor Edge is a GuideStar product that we've um, managed and updated for many years. Um, there are 22 community foundations around the country um, that use it to basically provide a lot of GuideStar.org functionality on their own website. So it enables uh, local nonprofits that are in that community to directly update their profile on that community foundation's website. That then gets synchronized with GuideStar.org, um, and then that data can go out through all, all the other channels. Um, so we've been doing a lot of work on the architectural side to enable that back-and-forth information to be seamless. Um, we're, we're now, now that we've gotten and we're getting a lot of the bugs worked out on the front end on GuideStar.org, once we're confident that a lot of those bugs are worked out, then we'll be turning our attention to, for uh, community foundations, how the profiles can be similar. Uh, the one big difference is for a community foundation, they can add additional fields that are relevant in that community. It might be about some local community uh, collective impact initiative or, or other local uh, community work. And so um, we, we need to be considerate of that when we're thinking about the, the front end design of what that profile looks like uh, for the community foundation using Donor Edge. But that's definitely uh, on our roadmap and, and work that we're going to be engaging with the community foundation, those 22 community foundations, uh, to think through with them how to best take that on. All right. Um, and uh, 
next question I have here is, um, sorry, let me get to it real quick. Uh, yeah, so we have a question here about uh, if there was any specific lessons that, Evan, that you learned uh, in kind of the, the different mock-ups and iterations that we had of the profile pages and uh, anything specifically, any stories about that? Um, well, yeah, I guess the, the biggest one is that something's always a lot easier to do on a piece of paper than, <laughs> than when you actually try to build it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we had lots of ideas throughout. Um, we would go from kind of conceptual and, and kicking something around with uh, a stakeholder or internally, and then talk to some of our engineers about it, and they would they would groan and oh my god, how are we going to implement that? So, and there was a lot of back and forth um, to try to get something that was feasible, doable, uh, realistic. Um, and so, there's a lot of ideas <clears throat> that were kind of to mix metaphors on the cutting room floor that that haven't been lost, but that we're thinking about. Okay, so further down the line, for example, service areas. So right now, um, all the only data we have about the area an organization serving is from a drop down menu in their profile update that says local, state, national, international. That's not very. That's somewhat useful, but it's not nearly as useful as if. You know, I'm a homeless service delivery organization. We focus on these neighborhoods. That's much, much more useful for both other organizations to be aware of, of what their more precise service area is, and for donors that are really looking to donate to somebody tackling problems in X community or in Y country. We need to get much better data on that. So that's one of the things that we've got on the roadmap that we want, that we're doing some prototyping around how might we enable nonprofits to just draw on a map. You know, where, where do you serve? what countries or what uh, uh, census blocks, you know, at, at all levels, um, so we can get much higher resolution, because that will enable much more powerful searching, filtering, um, mashups of data, et cetera. Um, so there's, there's a lot of, uh, we're kind of awash with ideas, um, and, and there's kind of a funnel of, of what will actually work and, and be able to get done in a timely fashion. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we want to get things out the door. So um, there's, there's some things that get punted because we're trying to get the, the good out the door uh, and not get stuck on what might be the perfect. So, um, and it'll never be perfect. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's the, been the process. Lots of iteration. We, we try to do as much iteration internally uh, with pen and paper or, uh, or just kind of a simple rendering digitally uh, rather than building something uh, so that we can get it right and get some feedback on that. Um, then we go into kind of a prototyping phase. If there's real back and forth dynamic behavior, we want to prototype that to make sure it, it works and it's not too super confusing for folks. So we did a lot of that with our profile update tool, for example. Um, so we're getting better at that, uh, better, getting better at kind of having a, proto a sketching ideation phase, a real prototyping phase, and then go time. All right, this works. Let's get it implemented and out the door and, and, and really uh, hitting the gas to try to do that as efficiently as possible. Um, so that's that's been we've been getting better at that over time. All right. Well, with that, we are right at the hour. So uh, thank you everybody for joining us, and uh, we hope you will join us for our future 2016 impact calls. Our, our first one, Evan, if you click to the next page, I believe it's going to be on uh, February the 9th. Yes, of next year. So uh, we look forward to uh, having everyone join us in 2016. Thanks for joining us today, and have a great day.